All right, shooting for no edits. We're just play <laughs> playing the hits. <laughs> After installing a paved stone patio over the last three days, yeah, yeah, sure, we're we're right on it. Sorry for looking a little little rustic. <laughs> yeah, a little Florida, um, a little Arizona. I'm pretty dirty right now. Yeah, we just um, finished. We just beat the rain. Just beat it. I mean. <laughs> Oh, well, it better not rain. It better not rain. But yeah. we, were, we were installing a paving stone patio, and the last step is is putting this stuff called polymeric jointing sand in, uh -huh. like, kind of in between the cracks between the paving stones. And it absolutely cannot rain after you put that mm -hmm. stuff in, or while you put it in, because it, it like, interacts, and it, like, it, when you get wet, when it gets wet, it, like, does this chemical interaction. So we were, like putting the stuff on it would start barely drizzling and getting yeah. getting a little windy and then we would cover the cover whole patio the and, and we'd wait 15 minutes and of course it would be completely calm yeah and we'd be like okay i guess we're safe and then we'd uncover it and the rain the, the wind would come up again and we would uh, i was just like but anyway that's that's what we've been doing the last three we days we think we are done yeah and in the name of no edits let's move on into the music stuff we did okay right? yeah let's jump right into it <laughs> At least create clean edit points for yourself. All right. Uh, <laughs> That's what the uhs are for. Uh, they actually work a lot better than you would think. <laughs> anyway, music stuff. It's been a big music week. It well, has. Let's start slow with Petty Nicks at Greenwood Village. Yeah, Curtis Park. Yeah. Greenwood Village. Which, speaking of rain. Speaking of rain. Very nearly rained out. Oh, it was so close. I mean, it rained hard. That classic, we've talked about it on the pod before, so the, the Colorado rain where it'll go sideways and it just mm -hmm. gets, we're under an enclosure, but it just still rains. So we had to like pull all our gear to the middle of the stage during sound check. And Cover it with trash bags and stuff. Yeah, the whole thing. And then uh, it Denver actually flooded, downtown oh, yeah. at least. Uh, so Ari... Our great keyboard player, Ari, uh, was coming down from Boulder, where he lives, and had to get off I-25 because apparently there were submerged cars and yeah. it was just blocked off. Yeah, um, and he said he drove by an apartment complex where cars were completely submerged yeah. in the parking lot, Yeah, like up just, to the roof. It's just a crazy summer storm, yeah. and we've had so much rain that it's no longer soaking in, so it just... Did you see we got more rain last month than Seattle? No, but I did hear it's the most rain ever on record for, yes. uh, for yeah. June. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we started that show actually playing in the rain. I yeah, mean, the it, sun was shining, right. but it was lightly raining, enough right. that people stayed. Yeah, everybody had umbrellas and rain gear, so yeah. they stayed. And then it stopped raining, I don't know, after half an hour half or an so. Hour, and then it was, it was good for an hour, and then... Like the minute we stopped. The minute we stopped. I mean, within five minutes, it was downpouring again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a great crowd. We haven't been down there before. Uh, it was in a really large um, soccer field right next to a really cool art, Curtis Park. They have a art uh, facility there, too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't know, a good crowd, two, three hundred people. Mm hmm. Uh, a little hard. I was just saying to somebody um, today, uh, I, I love playing outside. It's so nice that we get crowds like that. It is just so hard to kill outside. Mm. Like, they're enjoying it. They're having a very nice time. But you can't kind of whip them up and just... The energy's not contained in, in the room. That is exactly what That's, I said. Yeah, yeah, I remember you saying that. If people aren't kind of contained and pushed together, you just can't kind of whip them up into a frenzy. Yeah. And then the classic <laughs> thing happened, everybody gets up and dances on the very last song. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know, and it's like, well, we've been playing for an hour and a half, and now you're... Now you're dancing. Now you're dancing. Yeah. And they're like, one more song, and you're like, yeah, well... Um, <laughs> anyway, no, I so. want to be thank I mean, you know, it was it was a great show. Um, you know, one of those I felt a little thrown, but it was partially just because we were it was rained and Ari was late, and you know, it was. Uh, oh, it didn't throw me that Ari was late at yeah. all. It was. I felt I felt fine actually. I felt I felt good at that gig. I guess you were thrown. I was a little thrown. Huh. Anyway. Um, so uh, it was the first gig with our new new est. Yes drummer Joaquin yes. who's not doing all the shows we're still gonna have some of the other guys do pick up some shows because Joaquin has uh, got other stuff going on but um, 
it was our second show with him mm-hmm. and our first really big public show and uh boy just great yeah yeah and you know i was looking back at the things i've done this week just just kind of in preparation for this podcast be that was so that was thursday night uh-huh. before that on monday afternoon i recorded at mighty fine productions with pamela and that seems like a lifetime ago <laughs> Testing it. Working on that patio for three days straight. <laughs> yeah. And doing the show on Friday night. Um, yeah, but I want to talk about the, the song with Pamela because it's it was just, it's gorgeous. And um, it was a one of those like produce in the studio a little bit situations. Mm-hmm. I mean, we rehearsed it uh, the Friday before. So we learned it as a band on Friday. And then we went into the studio to record the album cut on Monday. Right. With so, Andy side out. Side yeah. Out. Um, yeah, he was producing. producing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And Lauren, I don't remember her last name, um, running the board. Um, okay. She's engineering. Um, the song is just gorgeous. And it so we worked from, her demo was a piano demo, but she wanted it to be more of a guitar, a folky kind of feel. So we worked that out. Because family and stuff is usually piano driven, yeah, but she very... wanted a different sound on this one. Yeah, yeah. Which is a long tradition of that. I mean, you know, there's yeah. piano people. And, yeah. um, and it's a longer song. It's almost five minutes long. Yeah, and you guys were, str- I wouldn't say stretching out musically in terms of like you're not jamming or not playing a bunch all. of licks, but everybody's being very creative. Like the guitar was creative, your bass line was like, I haven't really heard a bass line quite like oh, that dun, you know dun, 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 dun. well Pamela I started like I didn't know what to do in in rehearsal I just uh-huh. started with basically what she'd put on the demo with her left hand on piano and then we did something different with drums and that gave her an idea of like she's like I'm feeling polka and I'm like polka okay let me right. let me try some polka related <laughs> riffs <laughs> and what just came out naturally without even thinking was this dun 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 Da, 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 da. So right. it's a one five pattern, but it doesn't feel like polka. But it went perfectly with this kind of chicka chicka chicka, this like train rolling sort yeah, of drum beat. Yeah, not quite a train you know? beat, but yeah, but yeah, sort of a. Uh, I I just thought it was really interesting because it, it it not that it was some like from another planet baseline. It just like I haven't heard those things combined, like the oh. root fifth with. That like oh, I'm gonna do like almost like a clave on the bass, not in the sense of the, uh-huh. but like I'm gonna make a rhythm rhythmic figure that just repeats oh. and oh. kind of becomes the backbone of the song because it's this repeating rhythmic figure. Yeah, uh, I just haven't heard that com- combined yeah. with the root five. It was it was neat. You know, it was a question of like letting the song speak for itself. And honestly. I think everybody you know? uh, from the little bit I heard from the production demo, pre-production demo. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody was sort of doing that, just just kind of really, yeah. So yeah. what a cool experience. And you guys tracked yeah. live. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I forgot my iPad, so that was great. So you were going... I was right going totally by, by memory, so totally by memory. I did not have a single take that was mistake-free start to finish because I was using the chart off from my phone, which the, the song was mostly memorized, but like in the moment you're like, which is this course two or course three? Ah, we just added that thing at the beginning of the bridge. We were going to do differently this time. What was it? Ah, yeah. you know. <laughs> and so since I was looking at the chart on my phone and I don't, I don't know if Foursquare has a phone app. I should check that out, yeah. but I couldn't mark it up. So. Yeah. Well, and you guys were producing it in the studio, meaning probably making changes on the fly. Yeah. I mean, not big changes. I mean, but, but if like, I had it on my iPad, I could have marked it up as well. Right, right. But right. It, it was just all in my head. Still, what so. a great experience yeah. to have yeah, as a great. bass player. Yeah. 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 It's more great. studio time. You know, I'm getting a lot more stage time. It's good to get some more studio time. And I mean, I'm not nervous recording myself on bass because I can do take after take. That's easy. But it's like when I'm in the room recording what is likely going to be only four or five times through with the entire band. Right. Whole different situation. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, good growth experience. Yeah. Um, did you? Yeah. Did we talk Diamond Empire? Kid? We didn't. Okay, that happened this week. So I much think has happened it did. this week. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So. As you know, I'm on the Diamond Empire Band roster as a bassist, and I finally got a gig. So I'm going to be playing a wedding in October. Um, uh-huh. No rehearsal. Um, I'm just trucking my way through Nate's 159 most common songs played at weddings list. I'm mm-hmm. at letter letter H right now. Yeah. Wow. So I'm, I'm getting yeah, there. You're working through it. I'm working through it. A, f- yeah. a, f- a few a day when I can. 
So I, I'm super excited. Yeah, you have an amazing capacity for that. And, and I was just working with an artist development client this week about the same thing where it's like, you know, that incremental progress, like I'm just going to learn... And and you're ambitious. You're like, I'm going to learn three songs a day or whatever you're going to learn. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's three songs a week. Let's say it's one song a week. It doesn't whatever matter it is, as long up. as you're making progress. And, and kind of what the artist development client and I were talking about is, you know, sometimes people make these big goals that are just unreachable and they wind up doing nothing mm-hmm. because they were like, well, I said I would learn a hundred songs this week and there's no way I'm going to learn a hundred songs this week. So I'm just not even going to, and it's like, yeah. you should have just gone, I'm going to learn five this week. Yeah. You know, even if I started the week with this big goal, let me just drop it down. Yeah. Let me just get a little bit done. You know? It's just step by step. And this is, you're so good at this that. is, this particular project feels Easy to keep up with for me because it is limited in scope. Right. It's not something I'm going to do for 10 years, you know? <laughs> right. Learn three songs a day for 10 years. No, this is three songs a day to total maybe on the order of 200 songs. That's that's limited. So, And it's also easy because a lot of the songs are easy. So some of them are really quick to chart. And they're famous songs yeah. that you've probably performed and et cetera, et cetera. Or but at least heard all my life. Yeah, so, yeah. right. So yeah. from all that perspective. This isn't stretching my bass chops on most songs, but it's really good brain work. I was just going to say, it's really I, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's really good brain work and really good seeing like, oh, that's how that guy handled that chord change on that famous song. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, you know, and you just... Yeah. You get a vocabulary of those things. Yeah. So, um, talking based, talking Pamela. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk some singing. Yes. The I... Adrian O <laughs> Show Friday. Yay! It's, we did it. It's been talked about a lot. I think everybody who's watching knows yeah. it's coming. <laughs> yeah. We, it's our friends and family watching, and I've been making a lot of noise about it. What were you going to say? Uh, well, first show in five years. At least. At yeah, least. something and, like that. Yeah. Um, three quarters new material, maybe. Two thirds, something. It was a lot of, yeah, a lot of new yeah. material. Yeah. Which was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, we talked last week about how different it is to see that stuff come to life when you're playing in a room with real people because mm-hmm. a lot of times with Adrian O music we're we're putting it together in the computer and it's almost uh sometimes I was uh think you know it's there's a collage element to it where you've got pieces and you're pasting them around yeah. and moving them uh and that's the process of us putting it together and then you get real live people playing it and you're like oh my gosh that seems crazy and then you get it in front of an audience and mm-hmm. I asked you what you thought your favorite moment from the show was. And at least af- right after the show, your favorite part was the applause after the first song. Yes. Which yes. I got to say, the applause throughout the night was pretty thunderous. I mean, people, people <laughs> it was, showed it was, up. They did. They yeah. really did. A lot of people came. Every time I looked at a new area of the room that I hadn't looked at in five or ten minutes, I there know. was another friend there. Yeah. It was so cool. And I felt and so supported. People were excited. Yeah. That's such a shame, A, that that room is closing, and B, that they never took that room seriously. Yeah, I and know. And figured out the stage, you know, I don't know, whatever, um, figured out the stage, because there is something about that room that, like, like you can get excited in that room. Mm. You know, it's it's got a balcony, and it's got the, yeah. you know, it's just, there's something, you know, conversely... To the outside gig, it's big, but there's all this stuff like holding the energy in. Like crowds can mm-hmm. get excited about stuff yeah. in that room, even yeah. when we've done showcases there. Yeah, yeah. Crowds go nuts. Yeah, yeah. It's just a room you can feel good in. Yeah. Some uh, challenges with the uh, size of the stage. Yeah, we were pretty tight on stage. Did you feel like we had challenges with the sound during the show? Not really. You know, to be fair, I guess I should have said challenges with production because it's more the lights. Yes. So yeah. we knew that their lights were not working well or at all because we had a showcase there a couple months ago. and They couldn't figure out the lights. They couldn't figure out the lights. They couldn't get the, the, the stage lights right. to come on at all. And so the, we thought that would be the case again. And so I brought two light trees 
mm-hmm. and got permission to bring them. And they're like, don't know where you're going to plug them in. But <laughs> anyway, I brought them. We set up with an AO scrim on stage. So the old, like, I don't know, 10 by 10 yeah. scrim and put a couple of lights shining up on that. And it looks all cool. And then I went to go put up the light trees and I found the, the lights, the bar that has lights on top. And I could not find the stands. And I know I pulled them out. I know we put them in the car. I know they were not left in the car. And I circled oh. the building. I walked down the sidewalk. Did we take them out <laughs> of the car? Like, it, I, I looked everywhere. I too. looked everywhere I could think. So we just didn't use our lights, and there was just one white light shining on you. Just all blasted night. me in the face. <laughs> That's the only stage light That's we had. That's the only thing the DMX controller they could get to turn on. Yeah. So the media from that show is not impressive. Yeah. So we had a great show. We tore everything down, and then behind the stage scrim were the two stands for the lights. Yep. We hid them from ourselves. We hid them from ourselves. Oh my gosh. So mad at myself. But, like I said on the way home, if that is the worst thing that happened on the first show back with all this new music, uh, that's a pretty successful show. That's a very successful show. Um, yeah. yeah. And I thought, gosh, all the songs went well. Yeah. There were just, there were no real hiccups. No. I mean, there were like, I can think of maybe two little flubs. Right. The whole night. Across the whole band. Yeah. Aside from you, which I don't pay attention to you. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> I struggled a lot, and I found this very weird. I was just saying to um, my assistant, Kristen, um, uh, who was nice enough to come as well. That was awesome seeing oh, yeah. her. And uh, and friend, of course. Uh, I didn't realize how much of a problem it is for me to play and not be able to move my feet. Really? Like, I could, court- I could sort of shuffle at an angle back behind you. Uh-huh. But the drums were so close to me and then everything else was so close to me. I really couldn't take a step back. Uh-huh. And I didn't realize like it it was really like throwing my entire body off balance oh. to not be able to interesting move a little bit and I think that's where I'm kind of like keeping my balance is I'm kind of that's part <laughs> of moving. Huh. And also it goes against everything in my heart and soul. Like, occasionally I was trapped being in front of you, where you took a step back, and I couldn't oh. take a step back to get behind you. Yeah. And if you're not doing a solo, and you're just playing a rhythm part, and you're standing in front of the singer, there's nothing more painful to me. It just tears <laughs> yeah. at me. I'm like, this is so awkward. This is so awkward. Yeah. That side you, stage, is that is just too small for us. Yeah. I mean, if I just had even three or four steps to just... I just want to be able to get behind yeah. you yeah. visually. Um, and then, of course, I can step up. I step way up in front of you. Although, I was going to say, I, I've been noticing it with Petty Nicks. I guess we're just out of practice. Like, we'll do those things where everybody moves up to the front uh-huh. for big choruses or whatever. Uh-huh. And I lately have been consistently getting about a step in front of you and everybody else. Like, I've just been judging... The steps wrong. <laughs> really? And when I get up to the front for the chorus, and I'm like, oh no, I'm a step in front of everybody. <laughs> like back up. Well, maybe we need to be a little more aggressive. I guess I don't. I think I'm just out of practice, huh? like stepping up for stuff. But yeah, this the spatial aspect of that show was difficult. For yes, me. it sure was. I yeah. mean, for me too. I didn't have anywhere to go. But yeah. Well, I, I mean, small complaints. If yeah. that's your only complaint yeah. for a show like that, like it's hard to complain. Yeah, it went went so well. Um, uh, just, all the new material went great. New show went great. Uh, my mom sent flowers to the band yeah. at the Hard Rock Cafe. Like it was I, addressed yeah. Adrian Osborne Hard Rock Cafe, five hundred Sixteenth Street, Denver. Oh my gosh, keep that. Uh, yeah, I, I I took a photo too, so I can keep it forever. Um, so band yeah. um, I didn't open the card until I got home, but it was for the whole band. Yeah, so super sweet. Um, and our Original, uh, I guess original bass player, Tyler. Yeah. Yeah, he's original and last. But yeah, original and last. No, that's not true. Mario was our Mario. last bass player. Um, original right. and last American bass player. Yes. <laughs> he came to the show. Yeah. He's also just a really good friend of ours. A very um, good very, friend. Very, very we don't see each now. other. Um, I told him after the show, at some point they showed up in the second set, and at some point I noticed he was there mm-hmm. and immediately got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we all respect each other so much, like him and you and me, like uh, yeah. all three of us are just like, it, he's so cool. He's so incredibly cool just and, like and has become such dude. a monster player, yeah. like in terms of like part writing and delivery. I mean, he'll never see this, so why am I even going into it? But, <laughs> um, and just the coolest dude in the world. And I was like, yeah. that's. One of the five dudes in the world I would be nervous in front of. <laughs> and I saw him and I was like... Oh. I hope he gets his band started sometime, you know? Yeah, I know. We've talked about that. We should probably be pushing on that a little I, bit. I did push him a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So to fill you guys in, earlier this year he invited us out to dinner, which is a rare occasion. We we probably get together for dinner like... Once may, a year. Maybe once a maybe year. Maybe once a year. And he invited us and I was like, oh, he's... This isn't just a dinner. There's a there's a reason for this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's ever happened before that he's invited us. <laughs> well, it just occurred to me, you guys know Tyler, because he was, I think, our first guest on the podcast. No, no he wasn't a guest on this podcast. We, we were, were a guest on his podcast yeah, we were for on Murder the, by Death. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, okay. So we're in their Patreon. We're in their Patreon. Okay. Yeah, I, I will ask him about that check. I wonder why we haven't seen any... <laughs> he needs to be on this podcast. Yeah. Anyway... Earlier this year, he invited us to dinner, and after we all caught up, he said he was going to start or restart his band. Yeah. And he would like you to play guitar and me to play bass, because yeah. he sings really well, and he wanted to sing. And I said, absolutely, and you said, I'll think about it. <laughs> you said nothing. <laughs> I could feel what You're like, I don't have time. But I would do it, and he said, I'm going to be really picky about your bass playing, and I was like, bring it on. Yeah, that would be such a cool experience. And so I'm hoping he, he starts it. We'll see. Well, he's we'll busy see. touring the world and uh, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. I think, I think, I think MBD is still catching up on a few scattered shows from pandemic times. MBD I mean, they had, being Murder by Death. Murder by Death. Their band. And they were doing a big festival here Saturday, which was why he was able to see us Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a big festival at the Capitol. And, yeah. and they were, I think they wound up headlining, actually. Really? Yeah, oh. I think they were I think they were direct support for the headliner, and then the headliner dropped, and so they were headlining. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. Huh. Good for them. Anyway, gosh, uh... What else has been going on? I think that's pretty kind much of it. We are yeah. completely wrecked <laughs> from installing that patio. We have a beautiful maple tree in our yard, but the root situation is oh. unreal. Yeah, digging out the 12 by 8 foot rectangle um, was a lot of work. There were times you were spending half an hour to move another inch like just hacking, hacking. It roots. Hack. yeah unbelievable and, and then i installed all the paving stones on top of well so it's dig it out and then fill it with sand level yeah. the sand then put uh these paper foam base. these yeah. foam paper bases on and then put the the tiles on top of that or the the concrete paper stones and i i put them all down and, and i noticed about halfway across that i was a little out of alignment so the paving stones were just like a couple of degrees off from the square of the of the base. And I was like, well, too late now. I'm just going to have to trim off that edge yeah. later when we put the edging on. And then I got up this morning and noticed that not only was it offset by a couple of degrees, but there was a significant dip in a couple of places. So I pulled all the stones, pulled some of the, the base, put some more sand in, leveled it out, and put all the stones back on. And now everything is square and a little more level. A little more though. <laughs> We're not but going more. into business making patios anytime soon. We would Don't starve. We're st we would starve. <laughs> We're sticking with the music business <laughs> because we would <laughs> we would go bankrupt <laughs> with the patio installation business. Yeah. Uh, gosh, so takeaways. Any takeaways? Um. Uh, don't forget my iPad when I go to the studio to record new songs. You know, and I forgot my iPad recently at a. Uh, at the last AO rehearsal before the show. You did. I sure did. So we got to... We got to rely on checklists. I have checklists for everything. I have a checklist for going to a bass gig. I have a checklist for going to a Penny Nicks gig. I have a checklist for going skiing. Um, but I did not use my checklist when yeah. I went to record at the studio. I, so I just yeah. use it. 
I need to do that. And I actually had somebody ask me, another AD client ask me if I had a checklist template they could use. So maybe that's something we could oh, create that would help people. That's a great idea. It's just a like, you know, you can delete things off it if you don't yeah. need it or add things, but we could make a little template for people to I love just that. be like, yeah. yeah. I have no template. I just have like groups of bags of gear that go <laughs> to different shows. And uh-huh. so I go, these three bags go to a Petty Nick show. These two bags would work for an AO show. If mm-hmm. we're doing a looper show, it's these three or four bags. So I have like stuff just kind of in groups, which isn't perfect. Um, so, But it allows you not to... I don't it, have you to keep, think about it too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah exactly. I keep things kind of contained. But, uh, you know, I'm running everything off the, the one pedal board usually. So yeah. that makes it yeah. kind of easy. Um, all my sounds are in there. But... Yeah. I'm trying to think of other takeaways. Don't hide stuff as you set up stuff on stage. Yeah, that would be a good oh. one. Don't watch where you're putting yeah, stuff. Yeah, watch what you're covering up yeah. with your scrims. <laughs> well, you have to load, you know, you load in the side behind the kitchen in the elevator room where they're like yeah. taking food to like another restaurant or something <laughs> upstairs. And then you got to wind through the kitchen and then through, through the, the tables, through the tables in the audience to load in. So it is a messy. It load is, in. and everybody's gear is is in piles, and there's not enough room on stage to move with all the gear. Like, yeah, there's barely enough room to move on stage once everyone is set up. Yeah, but everyone cannot set up at the same time. Yeah, at the hard it's, rock, so. Yeah, I guess well, it's not totally our fault, but. Should yeah. We, should we wrap it? Let's wrap it. I feel it. like we're just dragging. Uh, we are so tired. Um, I recommend not taking on yard projects ever, never. <laughs> but you used to do that. I used to do. I used to. I used to. In I, hot summer Florida. I mean, hot I used Florida to summers. be. I used to be a worker. I guess that's all gone. Although I guess I'm gardening all the time and stuff. But anyway, yeah. uh, I was just joking. Um, let's close it out. This podcast is sponsored by Performance High Voice and Music Studio. And who else do we want to do? Let's give a shout out to the Hard Rock Cafe. Let's give a shout out to Hard Rock Cafe. You know they have hosted us. Oh gosh! For a yeah. bunch of great. Adrian O's shows back before the pandemic we used to have just monster shows there um we've seen great bands there we saw Andy Rock's band um there you really liked them this is we're trying to do this without edits don't worry Andy Rock had a band and it was good and it was Andy <laughs> Rock um we've done so many showcases there that were yeah. just phenomenal and the guy who used to book the hard rock John Lindsay John Lindsay he's the one who booked us at Coors Field so oh it, was the hard so rock, it was the Hard then, Rock that led us to, to Coors Field. And he saw our post this week and, and wished us well for the, for the show. Oh, that's so nice. And I, I thanked him again for, for yeah. the Coors Yeah, oh course my week. gosh. Yeah. So uh, Hard Rock Cafe, if you happen to be in a city where there is one, um, that's no longer going to be Denver, but if you're in... Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe they'll no, they're gonna No, yeah. they're going to move. They're going to put another one up. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, Performance High, Hard Rock Cafe... Sorry for the lazy podcast, but uh, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Right. We'll try to do better next time. <laughs> yeah. See you next week.